This is ABC 15 Mornings. She worked as a champion for equality up until her very last day. This morning, we are honoring the extraordinary life of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And as we get closer to Election Day, there are a lot of questions surrounding mail-in ballots. What you need to know when it comes to voting from home in Arizona. Also, we're giving you a chance to give back to someone in need. Young, older, we're going to show you how to get involved in our annual bike drive. It's such an important and fun way, an easy way to give back to the community. And we are glad that you're starting your morning off with us 6 o'clock on this Saturday. I'm Noheilani Graff. And I'm Mark Thompson, social distancing from home. I have not ridden my bike in a long time. I need yeah. to get the tires pumped up and get back out there. And of course, it'll have to be during the early morning hours because uh, summer is holding on with these temperatures. No, way. boy, she's just not letting go. Yeah, I think at the beginning of the pandemic, when everybody was staying at home, we saw a rush on bicycles. Families were out. It was awesome. Yeah. Then we got really hot. But I think we're slowly, at least in the mornings, getting back to those windows to be able to hop on the bike again and get outside. Right now, 83 degrees in the Phoenix Metro. Those winds have picked up now blowing at 10 miles an hour in the central portion of the valley. And we are going to stay cooler for the next couple of hours. We'll remain in the 80s through that 8 o'clock hour by 9 a.m. We're at 90 degrees. Official sunrise time coming up in 14 minutes now. So it's a nice morning to get out for that bike drive or bike ride, I should say, or simply take your coffee outside on the patio and enjoy the cool down while you can. We will get toasty today day though still feels like summer. I'll talk about it coming up in just moments. We want to start you off with some breaking news this morning that we have been following. We've got a live look for you now at a large police presence in a Peoria neighborhood. You can see the crime scene tape is up. The lights are still flashing on some of the patrol vehicles there. We know that officers have been surrounding this home near 91st Avenue and Bell Road for the last hour or so. And now we're looking directly at the house. You can see that they're all parked in front of. So far, we're not getting a lot of information, but our crew on scene does say that a police officer told them they're working to locate a robbery suspect. So if they have found their suspect, if this is connected, we will continue to update you as they let us know more right here on ABC 15. And of course, our big story this morning is the passing of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the nation now in mourning over the loss of this Supreme Court justice and icon. Take a look here. Crowds gathering throughout the night in our nation's capital in honor of Ginsburg, who died at the age of 87. And this morning, we're going to be sharing some local connections as well as some political implications after her passing. Here's ABC's uh, 15's Faye Fredericks. She was just the second woman to serve on the U.S. Supreme Court, but Ruth Bader Ginsburg's true legacy may be as the legal architect of the equal rights movement. She's an icon because of she was a pioneer in, in winning women's rights that we all take for granted now, but that were a tough struggle for her for decades. Um, but she was the leader of that. She graduated at the top of her class at Columbia Law School, but former ASU Law School Dean Paul Bender remembers first meeting her as a high school classmate. She's beautiful and she was very active and involved in things. She was a, really a presence in, in the class especially because she was so smart. Her career began in the 1950s when sexual and racial discrimination were common. At the American Civil Liberties Union, she challenged laws that treated men and women differently in employment, housing, and government benefits. Dennis Burke met her after she was nominated to the high court by President Clinton in 1993. She was extremely polite. <laughs> Burke was a Senate Judiciary Committee staffer then. It was an expression, I think, a reflection of her respect uh, for the system and, and, and how the process worked and the role of the Senate. As a Supreme Court justice, she was best known for writing the far-reaching decision that struck down the Virginia Military Institute's men-only admission policy in 1996, a case argued by her former classmate, Paul Bender. It's a very, very strong opinion. I think it's probably the strongest opinion the court's ever written about 
why you can't discriminate against women in that way. Small but mighty, she worked throughout cancer treatment in 1999 and again 10 years later, becoming something of a pop culture icon in recent years, the subject of a 2018 documentary, RBG. On social issues like civil rights, abortion, and separation of church and state, Ginsburg was a consistent liberal, yet she won the admiration of many conservatives for her grasp of the law, carefully considered opinions, and powerful sense of humor. She got along with uh, members of the Senate and her colleagues on the court because she had such a wide array of interests and she also had an ability to enjoy life and joke uh, with anyone regardless of what their judicial persuasion was. Ruth Bader Ginsburg passing at the age of 87. She truly was an American icon, and the tributes for Justice Ginsburg continue to pour in. A political battle, in the meantime, is already brewing, though, over her replacement. The flags above the Capitol and the White House have been lowered to flat half-staff this morning. So many from across the political spectrum also honoring Ginsburg's work as a champion of equality in a quarter century on the court. She led an amazing life. What else can you say? She was an amazing woman. Whether you agreed or not, she was an amazing woman who led an amazing life. She uh, practiced the highest American ideals as a justice, equality and justice under the law. And uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg uh, stood, uh, stood for all of us. Speaker Nancy Pelosi calling her death devastating, adding Ginsburg embodied justice, brilliance and goodness. Former President Bill Clinton, who nominated Ginsburg to the high court in 93, tweeted that she was one of the most extraordinary justices ever. The American Civil Liberties Union, where Ginsburg directed the Women's Rights Project in the 70s, said she leaves a country changed because of her life's work. And of course, now the question becomes, will a nominee be pushed through before the election? And if Biden wins before he actually takes office, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says that a Trump nominee will get a full vote by the Senate, but that is in stark contrast to his approach back in 2016. This nomination ought to be made by the president. We're in the process of electing this year. As my parents taught me, McConnell led the charge in blocking Merrick Garland in, uh, back in 2016. That was an Obama nominee. At the time, he said the American people should get to decide by waiting to see who is voted president. Now, keep in mind, Garland was nominated in March. Any potential nomination now would be at least six months later than that. One other note, President Trump actually announced a new slate of 20 potential nominees just last week in the event a seat opened on the Supreme Court. Now, we have reached out to both of our Arizona senators to see if they would support a vote on a nominee before the election. Senator Martha McSally tweeting the Senate should vote. Senator Kirsten Sinema not addressing the vote, but she did tell us Ginsburg inspired her and countless others. And our state getting a lot of attention this week from the Trump campaign and uh, the President, uh, his daughter, and the second lady and the vice president all coming to town. Political experts say it's what everyone has expected with many polls showing Biden in the lead. Vice President Pence hit on all of the major talking points during his visit. President Donald Trump rebuilt our military. President Donald Trump has stood every day with the men and women who serve on the thin blue line of law enforcement. And we are on track to have the first safe and effective coronavirus vaccine before the end of this year. That vaccine timeline is, of course, still up in the air. There are now just 45 days until Election Day and exactly two weeks left to register to vote. Time now, 6.09. Let's turn our attention to that most accurate forecast. Want to give you your Valley Activity Planner for the morning. I'm going to give you the green light. If you want to go for a run or a bike ride this morning, hiking, I am still going to give you the caution light. And that's just to be mindful of the temperature and the hour. We will hit triple digits by noon. So by then you should be off the mountain because we will get toasty today. 104 is that forecast high. Our average for this time of year should now be in the double digits, 99. So we are about five degrees above the average. 
average. But fortunately, we're also about 10 degrees below the record, which was 111 for this date. You will also notice today some breezes in the morning hours, 5 to 15 miles an hour here in the valley with gusts up to 25 miles an hour. Very similar conditions up in the high country, but the timing will be different. So I'll talk about when we'll see the strongest winds here in the valley coming up in that full most accurate forecast. All right, no, hey, thanks. It is now 610 on your Saturday morning. Results from this year's presidential election. They're going to be coming in a little bit differently this year. What to expect on November 3rd? That's coming up. Also still ahead, the CDC taking back a message sent out about COVID-19 testing. We'll tell you what they have to say now. Welcome back, everybody. And there are still a lot of questions right now surrounding mail-in ballots. And with the majority of Arizonans expected to vote by mail, how can you be sure that your vote will be counted? ABC 15's Nicole Valdez goes one-on-one -on -one with the Secretary of State about her confidence in our voting system. 2020 is kind of a big deal. I really want my vote, vote to count. I want my voice to be heard. It'll be Maria Sanchez's first time voting. To be honest with you, it's it's kind of nerve wracking. But trying to cut through the noise and the doubt has been hard to do. I'm going to go to the polls just because I've heard a lot of like nonsense uh, with the mailing vote in and all that stuff, you know, just so I know that my vote you know, counts over at the state capitol. Voters have a lot to think about and they shouldn't have to really um, struggle over how, how to vote. Secretary of State Katie Hobbs says she's been trying to correct a lot of misinformation. Voters in Arizona should know that all ballots are treated the same, whether they're ballots by mail or ballots that you vote in person. There's the same security and fraud prevention measures around all of those ballots. And this isn't our first rodeo. In fact, Arizona has been a no excuse mail in voting state since the late 90s, meaning you've never needed a reason to ask for a ballot by mail. You can sign up to get one every election season with ease. So why is the process now under fire? Well, for starters, tweets like these. President Trump claiming mail in voting will lead to the most corrupt election in our nation's history and be a major threat to our democracy saying ballots could go missing. Others argue ballots can and have been sent to some who are no longer eligible to vote or have even passed away. But here's a take from those who are in charge of that process. In our largest voter jurisdiction, there will occasionally be some missteps uh, regarding sort of the, the little things that you're talking about. But the reality of the circumstances that most of those cases are reported on because they're so unusual. On the state level. I am very confident that things are going to go well in November. We Even on the front end. I am not concerned about voter fraud or um, any sort of mass fraud due to the vote by mail. Runbeck Election Services President Jeff Ellington, his company tasked with printing millions of ballots for counties nationwide. Every county's got their own processes, their own their own envelope design, their own tabulation system. There's four major tabulation vendors. So to so to even replicate at scale any sort of fraud effort, you got to know what kind of envelopes the county had. You got to be able to get them generated. You got to get the ballots ingested into the system. You got to forge signatures. There's steps. You got to have the right barcode on the right ballot that matches the right precinct. There's steps all along the way that prevent any sort of fraud from happening. Still, the choice is yours on how you want to cast your ballot. In order for me to really feel comfortable and really uh, almost like accept that I voted, it would have to be in person because I don't want there to be any misunderstandings or, or things like that because this uh, election is really big to me and I really want to, you know, get it done right. And the U.S. Postal Service recommends if you do want to vote by mail, you get that ballot in by October 27th, seven days before the election to make sure it not only gets there in time, but is counted in time. But we've told you before that it doesn't mean you have to send it back by mail. Instead, you can walk into any vote center across the county or go anywhere with a secure drop box like here. Questions, problems? Email us at yourvote at abc15.com. I'm Nicole Valdez, ABC 15, Arizona. 
And election night might not bring immediate results in some races, and that's because of the way that Arizonans are voting. There are a lot of different ways. Now Maricopa County is laying out which results you will see and when. So here's some very important information. At 8 o'clock on November 3rd, one hour after the polls close, the first tally will be posted containing all early ballots received by the Saturday before Election Day, in this case, Halloween. The next update between 9 and 11 on Election Night will come from all votes cast in person on Election Day. The county will continue adding to the totals after 7 o'clock every night that follows Election Day. They say the later updates help make sure that votes are counted in as few days as possible. Let's get to that most accurate forecast for you now in case you want to get out this morning and get a run in. It's actually pretty comfortable out there. We've got 80s in the Phoenix metro area. That official sunrise came up at 615 this morning, so we're starting to see that first light of dawn. By 10 o'clock, though, we're in the mid 90s. It'll be breezy, so that'll help keep it a little bit more comfortable, but it is starting to get a little bit toasty by that time. And then at 2 o'clock, we're at 102 degrees, and we still haven't reached our forecast high. Live temperature drop right there in Tempe, now down to 79 degrees. So we've got a little bit of cooling now that we're sitting right at that sunrise time. It's down to 73 in Chandler this morning, 76 in Apache Junction. Same temperature out in Surprise, but we've got 80s across the central portion of the valley this morning. Still comfortable across the state. More 70s to our south in Gila Bend, Casa Grande, Tucson, Safford down to 70 degrees. Sholo starting the morning off in the low 60s, and we're in the 50s this morning in Flagstaff. Nice and crisp up there. Our Valley Planner looks like this, so we'll stay in the 80s through that 9 o'clock hour, then the 90s show up. We'll linger in the 90s until lunchtime, and then we warm to triple digits, 100 degrees at noon, 101 by 1 p.m. Also, we are going to notice some breezes picking up today. So that forecast high will stay at 104 for Tempe, Glendale, Mesa, and Gilbert. It'll be 102 in Apache Junction, Fountain Hills, 103 in the Deer Valley neighborhoods, 105, though, out in Goodyear and Levine. Remember, our average for this time of year as we get closer to the official start of fall should be in double digits. Mother Nature just not quite ready to let go of her summer feels just yet, though. We'll continue to see triple digits to our south 103 in Casa Grande, 103 in Ajo, 107, the warmest spot in the state in Yuma and very similar temperatures to that up to northwestern Arizona. Up in Sedona today, going to be a little warm in the low 90s, but still comfortable if you're in the shade and walking along Oak Creek. It's certainly going to be refreshing there to our north in Flagstaff. Even cooler 78 is that forecast high for you. We'll stay in the 80s in Heber, Window Rock and Sholo. Now, if you are staying in Flagstaff through the weekend, we're going to continue to linger in the upper 70s for the next several days up in the high country. It is going to be windy up there today and then on Monday and Tuesday, there's a slight chance for rain in the forecast, but only about a 10% chance as some moisture moves in and helps drop our temperatures here in the valley. But as through those breezes today, we'll notice they'll be strongest here in the valley in these morning hours leading up to lunchtime. So it's a windier morning and then they'll die down in the afternoon. But at lunchtime is when they really start to pick up in northwestern Arizona in the Grand Canyon, Kingman area and into Flagstaff going up to about 20 miles an hour in Kingman by three o'clock this afternoon. And that's when those breezes will be died, dying down to about five miles an hour here in the valley. The rest of that weekend forecast a little warmer tomorrow here in the valley. 105 is that forecast high and then our temperatures start to dip. Thanks to the moisture that's going to be building up in northern Arizona we will be down to 103 on Tuesday. So we're slowly but surely getting a little bit closer to that average for this time of year. I'll show you if we get there within that seven day forecast coming up a little bit later this morning. All right, no, hey, thank you. 6.20 now on your Saturday morning. A set of wheels can mean so much to someone who is struggling to get around the city coming up. How an upcoming bike drive can help out so many families. Next weekend is a really important fundraiser that ABC 15 has teamed up with St. Vincent de Paul and Earnhardt Auto Centers for the Second Chance Bike Drive. It's one of our favorite events of the year. So joining us to talk more about it this morning is Marisol Saldivar from St. Vincent de Paul. Hey, Marisol, so glad to see you. Hi, so good to see you again. So tell people a little bit about what our bike drive is all about. You know, our bike drive is really helping to get transportation to people who desperately need it. Um, maybe they just need to get to work 
or for a child, they just need a way to get to school. Um, and so every bike that you give goes to helping kind of expand the world open to those people. I think that just about everybody is able to think back to their very first bicycle and that story and how they felt and when they learned to ride it. So for kids especially, it's that, that sense of ownership, but also the cost of a bike for parents can be out of reach sometimes. Oh, I know. I mean, I, I remember riding around, hanging out with my friends. How many childhood memories do we build on a bike, honestly? Um, we want to be sure that everyone has those experiences um, and that everyone has access not only to those great memories, but for adults to more jobs, to a means to get to the grocery store and, and get amenities for yourself. Um, so that's what bikes do. One of the really great things about this too is that to donate, you don't have to go out and buy a brand new bike yourself. You've actually got a great story. You guys, you and your husband are donating your bike. I know, so look at this bike. Everyone has, well, maybe not everyone, but so many people have a bike that's hanging around in the garage. This is my husband's bike. It was hanging around in our garage. And um, this is what we're going to donate on September 26th. We live right here in Avondale. There is an Earnhardt dealership so close. And so we'll be dropping this off that morning. And uh, the other thing to note is this was the bike that he used to get to and from school when he didn't have a car and he was a college student. So he remembers what it was like to need those two wheels. And he knows that, you know, it served him well. He has a great job now. And hopefully this bike can serve someone else in the same way. So things are a little different for a second chance bike drive this year. Normally we would do kind of a month of donation days, but this year we're doing one big donation day. So tell folks how they can participate. Yeah, so like I said, September 26th, that is the day. Make sure you mark it. Um, you're going to bring your bike on over to one of the 19 Earnhardt dealerships across the valley. I promise you there is one close to you, and there is no reason that this should be inconvenient at all. Load the bike up, go and drop it off. There are volunteers there at the dealership ready to accept the bike. But if you don't have a bike, you can always donate online too. Um, and we'll use those donations to buy tires, to get some tubes, to get everything we need to repair the bike donations um, up to, you know, up to speed and get them out to people who need them right there in our bike shop. That's where all of that happens. And that's the other important part of this too, is that whatever you do donate, if you donate a bike new or used, you don't have to be the handyman yourself. That's why the donations are so important because you guys are gonna help fix them up. This is just, it's so much fun when it happens. And of course, we'll always do the follow-up stories too to show some of the families who are benefiting from this bike drive because the reaction is priceless. And I know that our community will come forward and help. Absolutely. Yeah, my husband's bike, it's seen better days, I promise you. But we'll get it up to speed, like I said. <laughs> but it's also great to talk to you today. Thanks so much. Yeah, so good to talk to you too. Thank you.